birds ate my cherries, so I'm just going to have to enjoy them vicariously on this cake. What flavor cake will you make? Join me for some tea and cake. Hi everyone, I'm Catherine, the artist behind Bigelow Fine Arts. I have recently joined the secret society of the curious colorists. It is a lovely summer evening. The cicadas are buzzing and the crickets are chirping when I receive a book with exciting places to explore. I retreat to the garden to the lovely hanging lanterns that are providing gentle light and a cozy tent that awaits a relaxing evening. Join me for a little backyard tea and some relaxing coloring. Today will be lots of little bits and pieces, like cake and teapots. But first, I wanted to get the hanging lamp out of the way and I decided I should make it the same red-orange as the hanging lanterns. I came in with a base layer of orange, then I darkened up the sides with the pale geranium lake. The center should be the brightest part of the lamp, although technically the whole thing should be bright. It would look pretty strange that way. I now want to bring in the scarlet and get the sides even darker, and also blend the colors together to make them look smooth and uniform in their transition from dark to light. I bring in the sepia to darken the shadows more and increase the contrast between the shadows and the highlights. For the most part, the shadows are just along the edges, peeking out from behind the teepee flaps. I then come back in with both the geranium lake and the scarlet to add more layers and blend things together. And while I have the scarlet out, I'm just going to hit the top of the cake and color in some cherries. I love chocolate cake, so today with tea I will have chocolate. I'm starting with a base layer of burnt ochre. I come in with the bister on top. I'm keeping everything to nice light layers as I feel out the colors. I wouldn't want to burn the cake before enjoying it. Although at this point, if you wanted a vanilla or white cake, this would probably be about the right golden color. Already it looks delicious and it isn't even chocolate yet. I bring in the walnut brown to darken it up even more. I also add in shadows under the drips of frosting. Or is that ganache? Mmm. I'm adding in just the lightest layer with the scarlet. Sometimes chocolate cakes tend to have a slight reddish tint to them, and I'm trying to recreate it here with this very light layer. 
Now I bring in the sepia and make sure the shadows under the frosting are really well defined. I also put a shadow under the middle layer of cream filling and a shadow on the right side as that is the side furthest from the light source. Looks good, time for some frosting. Now here I decided to go with chocolate frosting, but pink would also look great. I'm sure other colors would look just as delicious. I started my frosting with a base layer of the walnut brown. I'm going light with the layer. I then bring in a light layer of black. I feel like frosting can get away with being more artificial looking, but again, I am keeping a light hand here. I add a very light layer with the scarlet again. I feel like it takes lots of different colors to make a good frosting and cake. I use the sepia to add in my shadows behind the cherries and on the sides with extra layers on the right side just like I did with the cake. I blend everything together with the walnut brown followed by the bister. I blend again with more walnut brown as I wasn't feeling it was blended and dark enough the first time, so I gave it another layer with the walnut brown. Mmm, looks delicious now. I touch up the shadows on the side because it occurred to me that I didn't add any shadowing to the cream filling layer. I go back and forth with the cream and the sepia to get the cream layer filled in and shaded properly. I also use the cream to blend out the cake layers just to help smooth out the color a little bit more. Now onto the teapot and you get to watch me struggle to figure out what color I wanted it to be. I initially had it as a light purple color, but I wasn't feeling it, so I tried a light magenta, and didn't like that either, so I erased it back. Then I tried a light blue, and didn't like that either. I erased it back and tried a darker blue, and noped out of that one too. I finally came in with the scarlet, and while I wasn't in love with it, it reminded me of my kettle, and I decided it was good enough. So I went through and put in a base layer with the scarlet over all of the dishes. If you've made it this far and like what you see, and you've enjoyed coloring with me or just watching me struggle to pick a color, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me a like and subscribe to stay informed of when I post more videos. Right now, I'm posting daily during the week, and subscribing is the best way to stay in the loop. I come back in for a second layer with the scarlet and begin to focus on where the shadows will go and adding in additional layers in those areas. That way I can keep the highlight area light while still adding more color and layers to the rest of the dishes.
I now bring in the sepia to darken up the shadows and define where they are better. Definitely on the left side for most of the items, with a shadow at the base of the teapot where the body would bulge out. The plate will get it on the right side where the cake is casting a shadow onto the plate. I bring in the scarlet again for more layers to fill in the tooth of the paper even more. I will bring in the sepia as well and make sure the contrast between the shadows and the highlight area looks good. I did leave the insides of the cup white for now. I wasn't sure what color to make them. I thought it might look a little strange filled in as it might be harder to tell it is a cup at that point and not just a red circular blob. Finishing touches here include filling in the sugar cubes with the cream, as well as going over the highlights with the cream to blend them and add more layers, and touching up the lamp again with more scarlet and sepia. I'm going to work on parts of the tent now, mostly the background and the door flaps. I kind of struggled with the colors here too. I wanted the background to be dark, but not the same color as the sky as it might look like the tent didn't have a back. 
I began with the phthalo blue putting in a light layer over all of the back part of the tent. It isn't my final color, but it does let me now see where all of the background is and gives it weight. I brought in the mauve on top of the blue. I began with a light layer, but decided to add in more layers to make it even darker. So I'm not pressing harder, I am just pausing in each area to darken it up more before moving on to the next area. I will then go over it again to make sure it is even darker. I bring the thalo blue back in to keep the purple more on the blue side, like a royal blue. Now for the teepee. I went with purple in my initial color scheme, so I decided to stick with it. I used the violet to add in a light layer on the door flaps. I wanted to get a feel for the color as a whole, and while I would never buy a purple tent for myself, it doesn't look bad. So I stick with it and add it in a layer over both door flaps.
I'm now using the sepia to add in shadows under the place where the flaps are tied back as well as in the folds to try to give the fabric depth and dimension. I am picturing the flaps with a ripple to them, so I am trying to pick the ripple points and add in shadows to them. Now that I think I have the shadows in the right place, I bring in the mauve to color the shadows and feather out the color into the violet. I'll add another layer of violet on top of the final color and call the door flaps done for today. Thanks for joining me for Tea in the Garden. Let me know below or on social media if you colored along. I'd love to know how you did. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, MeWe, and Patreon. Patreon has a short write-up, my palettes, and a list of the timestamps, and I've made them available for everyone. If you have any questions or page requests, please leave them below or reach out to me on social media. I put in a list of chapter breaks in the show notes, as well as a list of equipment I like to use. If you use any of my affiliate links, it really helps me out without costing you a thing. I want to thank you all so much for coming along and joining in with me on this coloring journey. I appreciate all my subscribers and look forward to more of you joining in and coloring along with me. Please like, share, and subscribe to help that happen. Until next time, happy coloring!